In December of 2021, my crochet pattern, the campfire blanket, went viral on TikTok. As a result, I gained thousands of followers on multiple social media platforms. I made thousands of sales on Etsy and overall my crochet pattern business was changed. So much of this experience was completely just, it was awesome and exciting and uh, challenging. And then a substantial part of it was kind of terrible. Going viral is presented to us on social media as some sort of accomplishment or a goal, especially if you're a small business owner. And we've all seen the countless articles and videos and accounts peddling the foolproof tips to go viral. But what I don't see very often are people discussing what is actually happening to the person who is going viral. And the thing is, we really should be talking about that. I was inspired to make this video in part by Abby Cox, who is the first person that I have seen uh, discuss how going viral affects a person's mental health. Her video on the subject was actually a really great comfort to me when I was going through this. And uh, I am incredibly thankful to her for that. In the event she sees this, hi Abby. <laughs> Today, I wanna to tell you about my experience going viral, both the good and the bad. Now, this is just my lived experience. It may not be reflective of what other people have gone through. I'm just gonna be relaying to you exactly what I went through and how I felt at the time. I am gonna be discussing a lot about mental health and anxiety specifically. So anyone who's sensitive to those subjects, you maybe you wanna pass on this video, that's okay. And also to be very clear, I don't have any tips on how to go viral. <laughs> Honey, if I could replicate it, I would. Oh wait, I tried, it didn't work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Before we start today, I want to define what going viral actually means because the term is overused these days. Going viral means to have at least 1 million views. That seems to be a pretty widely accepted definition. So with that out of the way, go grab a snack, gather around, We'll get into it. A brief history of the campfire blanket. So the crochet pattern in question is the campfire blanket, which is a beginner level pattern. I initially made it in September, 2018 when I first learned to crochet and I would make it several times over the next few years. In July of 2021, I decided to finally write up the pattern for the campfire blanket because I really just needed another pattern in my Etsy shop. My shop just looked absolutely so sad, just with two patterns in it. So I thought the campfire blanket would be just fast and easy and I could just get it up. Oh, that's a weird thing to say. I did not mean to say that. I began making the blanket one more time to perfect the pattern and to record it, things like, you know, how much yarn I was using, et cetera, et cetera. As I was crocheting, I was posting my progress on TikTok for the content because everything is content. How'd that song go? Not like that. It does not go like that. Much to my surprise, my post garnered quite a bit of attention and enthusiasm. Like one of my posts got over 750,000 views, which was a lot, especially considering the size of my platform at the time. I had been on TikTok maybe five months and uh, I had a couple thousand followers and I was only using crochet related hashtags, which I, I still only do. I still only use crochet related ha hashtags. The campfire pattern launched in my Etsy shop on August 4th, 2021. It was a digital download PDF, and that first day I sold 250 copies of the pattern. For perspective, before the launch, I had sold a total of 156 patterns in the entire year before. So like, that was pretty cool. From the pattern launch, I did learn some things and I made adjustments to both my product and my shop to better accommodate my customers and myself. I made it so the PDF can be easily read on any viewer, no matter what. And I made a whole bunch of save replies to answer the questions that I was getting most frequently. So that took some pressure off of me. I got a small taste of what it was like to get a large influx of orders. However, <laughs> this experience still paled in comparison of going viral. Over the next five months, I got sales pretty consistently, but by December, they had really trickled off and I was getting maybe, maybe one sale a day, but some days no sales at all. Going viral, a beautiful maelstrom. On Saturday, December 18th at 12 p.m., I posted a TikTok that went viral. To date, that video has 1.8 million views, hundreds of comments, and thousands and thousands of likes and shares. It's actually two clips from previous TikToks that I had just edited together in order to get more mileage out of the content I was making. Because making content is really laborious. Like it's just so much work. <laughs> like at the time, I didn't think it was anything revolutionary and I was anticipating that it would flop like many of my other posts. And I didn't pay attention to it after I posted it. Nope. <laughs> 
I don't recall when I knew that the post was going viral, but I uh, was tipped off to it when later that day my Etsy sale notifications began going off constantly. Between December 18th and 19th, I sold over 700 copies of the campfire pattern. Over the next week, that TikTok continued to gain momentum and reach hundreds of thousands of views. I continued to get tons of Etsy traffic, and that first week I wound up selling over 1,300 copies of the campfire pattern. And things really didn't begin to slow down until a month later in January. So I don't know what it was about that post that took it viral, and I think it may have been a few factors. One is that it may have been the time of year. Winter is the like craftiest time of year, and people are always looking for things to do inside that are cozy, keep their hands busy. Also, I said in the post how the campfire blanket is beginner friendly, and how people have told me that they learned to crochet with that blanket, which made it a bit more accessible to folks who have never crocheted before. But there is some kind of inherent magic to the campfire blanket, and try as I might, I have no idea what it is. It has been incredibly popular ever since the first time I made it, and I, I just do not know what this enchantment is. People just seem to like it. I wish I could bottle this success and replicate it with every design I make. Looking at you, birthday cake blanket. The impact. Can you hear my internal screaming? So I'm gonna break this up into the impact on my business and then the impact on me as a person. So the impact on my business, going viral came with it a huge spike in sales, which I can't lie, that was awesome. I don't, I don't know what else to say, so I'm going to move on. It was also a lot of work. Because the campfire blanket is a beginner level pattern, hundreds of folks who had either never crocheted before or were newer crocheters purchased the pattern and many of them needed additional support beyond the pattern and beyond the YouTube tutorials that I already had in place. I spent hours messaging with customers, uh, looking at photos of their progress and troubleshooting with them. I spent a bunch of time compiling additional resources for uh, supports that I had not been able to make yet. And I had to suggest to more than one person that they frog their entire project. I mean, like 20 rows, but still, ugh, those messages still haunt my dreams. Everyone took it like a champ. Everyone was completely wonderful, but I just, I, oh, I didn't like doing that. <laughs> oh, I'll remember that until I die. I also had to quickly scale again by updating my saved messages to be more detailed, to answer uh, the questions I was being frequently asked. The most common help request was actually downloading the pattern from the Etsy provided link. So troubleshooting uh, different reasons a person could be running into that problem and all of the different ways to help and get around it. And there was a case where a customer, no matter what we did, even when I emailed her the pattern directly, she still wasn't able to open it. So just like things that shouldn't be hard required so much time and attention from me. Thankfully that customer was an angel and she was very patient as we just worked through it and yes, she did get her pattern. I also had to quickly plan and create more YouTube tutorials to one, better support my customers, and then two, take some pressure off of me. Also, just a note, I was not part of the TikTok creator program at the time of my viral video. Uh, I had heard so many conflicting things about it that it just didn't quite seem like the right fit for me. So. TikTok never paid me any money for that viral post. Uh, uh, only, I've only earned money from Etsy sales. I don't know if I'll regret that someday. Ugh. The impact on me. I was overjoyed, ecstatic, before, thrilled, jubilant, blissful, delirious, rapturous, happy as a clam, pack a hoop. What? Huh. Okay. I was elated that my art resonated with so many people. I felt validated after years of working so hard, uh, not just on my crochet business, but uh, for the decade before as an artist trying to get an illustration career going. For years, I had sacrificed time and experiences with my loved ones, choosing to work on my art and business and not getting anywhere. I would put everyone, including and especially myself, on the back burner in hopes of getting an illustration career going. And it caused me to feel isolated and distressed and hopeless. Going viral felt like I was finally being recognized and compensated for my years of work. I had finally tasted just a bit of success and it tasted like chocolate cake with buttercream icing being fed to me by Channing Tatum. What? Did I say that out loud? I don't take it back. 
Now on the flip side of all of those good feelings, I became incredibly anxious. I was in uncharted waters and I did not know what to expect and I was terrified that something awful was going to happen. Physically, my heart rate was elevated, I was clenching my jaw, and my chest felt like I was just being squeezed by a giant python all the time. For a solid week, I was on edge. I could, I wasn't sleeping well and I could not relax. Even though I was feeling so stressed, I felt like I could not just unplug and walk away. There were real people that needed my attention and support. I needed to be there for them and I needed to deliver A plus customer service. I put so much pressure on myself to make this a good experience for them because my customers deserved it. Like, like this is what I had been working for. This is what I had been sacrificing for. This was it. This was the moment. And I felt like I could not mess this up. And then it hit me. This was just a taste of what it would be like if this was my full-time job. There isn't necessarily time to clock out or weekends or vacations. I didn't have a boss or coworkers who could help with the workload. It was all me, just me, 24 seven. Which yes, I knew all of this already. I am not naive, but to be in it and have it be a reality, to really experience it, it is different. This was just such a terribly overwhelming concept that I felt like I was just being crushed by a giant wave and then being swept out to sea by a riptide. As things slowed down in January, my anxiety did ebb, but for a while it was very rough. Like sands through an hourglass, what going viral does and does not do. Pretty sure that doesn't make sense, but okay, we're gonna go with it. Going viral objectively changed my crochet business. Because of the influx of traffic and sales, Etsy began ranking my crochet patterns higher up in search results, which then resulted in sales that were not because of the viral video. It was because my patterns were getting seen. The revenue I earned from pattern sales allowed me to uh, invest in my business and to buy some supplies and get an accountant, like an actual accountant, not the other kind of accountants. Going viral also enabled me to expand my circle and meet more people within my crochet community. Uh, people who are like kind and thoughtful and supportive and they've just been so wonderful. And they're some of my favorite part of this experience. Going viral did not solve all my problems as a business. Uh, crochet is still my side hustle. Going viral did not take me full time, like just so not even close. In fact, I would have to earn almost 10 times the amount in gross revenue annually in order to go full time. So yeah, we're not there. While going viral boosted my sales for a time, that success was fleeting and eventually the sales dissipated. Eventually that attention waned and I was back to one or two sales a day or some days just no sales at all. Going viral also did not make me a TikTok celebrity. I am not verified and I probably never will be. Even with all of my new followers, I was not immune from having posts just like completely tank and weeks and weeks and weeks of just bad engagement. It happens. Also, no brands offered me sponsorships. Like Netflix didn't call me to ask me to host a crochet competition show, but I'm still holding out on that. Michael's craft store didn't send me an oversized check and ask me to be the spokesperson for crochet. That would be weird, but I would do it happily. When all was said and done, everything was almost exactly the same. Perhaps the most important takeaway from this experience for me is I learned I had to set boundaries for myself. Now on TikTok, I really only reply to comments within the first 24 to 48 hours of a post. I direct anyone with a question about a pattern or their purchase to message me on Etsy so I can keep track of all customer communication in one place. I don't wanna miss anything. I have Etsy shop hours from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., which I know is still a very long day, but I will continue to revisit this if it becomes unsustainable. Right now it's all right. I don't know when or if any of my crochet patterns will go viral again. I hope that if it happens again in the future that I will be a little bit better prepared, but um, I'll have to see. I'm incredibly thankful for the kind of experience I had. I went viral for a good reason because there is a bad reason to go viral. Folks I interacted with were kind and they were respectful. My customers were patient and compassionate and appreciative and they gave me grace as I was scrambling to keep up with everything. My fellow crocheters made this experience really wonderful. And I get, like, I get chills thinking about it and I, uh, I get emotional thinking about it. <sighs> Don't look at me. Thanks for sticking with me through this video. I hope at the very least it was interesting. I know a lot of my subscribers are here because of that viral video and um, I'm so thankful for you all and I'm happy that you're here. To anyone who finds themselves going through their own viral experience, my one piece of advice is be kind to yourself. Breathe.
you'll be okay.